Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to this Saturday Craft Day with Craft Galley. We're doing a design team project today. And this is the card that we are going to be making. It's actually very simple to do, but a lot of fun. So the technique that we're going to be doing here is sort of like a marbling technique with your um, paste. Okay, so you want to grab out your paste of choice. Mine is Nuvo, and it is... I'll put it on the screen, but it's the sparkly clear. And I'm going to be using some alcohol pearl inks. Also, this Ulta New Flowing Butterfly stencil. Right here, I have some Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I wanted something very thick so that this would um, not warp as much. If I just use regular 80 pound cardstock, I feel like it would just have been a warpy mess. So we're going with the heavy duty stuff. I'm going to put down some purple tape so that it holds down my cardstock and my stencil. All right, so out here on my Tim Holtz glass craft mat, I am going to be putting three globs of this textured paste, this glitter paste from Nuvo. You can use um, any inkers that you have to change or alter the color. Um, these are alcohol inks. I have not tried this with dye reinkers, but I can't imagine that it would be any different. However, just know that I haven't tried it myself. But I'm going to mix that to get some color here. All, uh, or both of those. The one I'm going to leave clear because um, I don't want to, um, I, I kind of just want to have a nice mix. Now, doing this with white embossing paste, I think is probably the best way to keep that color saturated. Or I could add a little bit more of the alcohol inks. I think that would work. So I'm going to play around with this technique quite a bit. I learned this technique at a class I went to for Neat and Tangled out in Delaware, uh, maybe about a month and a half ago or so. Um, and so you can see this technique in action again uh, over on Tana Lowhouse's channel because she did this for the Save the Crafty YouTubers hop recently. So I'll link that video below in the description as well. So basically all you're going to do is take your palette knife and place down your colors just anywhere on the stencil. You don't have to really have any rhyme or reason. And I do this with all three globs. The reason that the white embossing paste is so great is because you're going to get an actual white marbling that happens throughout. So I'm going to show you the cards that we did at the, um, the event at the end of the video so you can kind of see what this looks like with white embossing paste and really bold colors and I believe we used watercolors um, from Dr. Martin's for that technique at the event but I wanted to try it with something different so that's why I pulled out the clear Nuvo sparkle paste as well as alcohol inks. I want to use what I have in my stash I don't have a lot of liquid watercolors I just have a couple colors um, I don't know if you can hear these dogs outside but there's something happening out there. Okay, I paused it and came back. There was some sort of canine quarrel outside. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, so anyway, back to the project. So here I'm just gonna smooth this out. I smooth it very lightly because I want to have a thick embossing uh, look. So there it is, finished, and I love it. I think it's just really soft and really pretty and you're gonna see the stark contrast to the dark colors we used. This is how I store my stencils. This is from Corin Whiskman. I saw her do this and I think it's brilliant because now I can see all my stencils in one place. So I'm going to just add this right to my blank sheet at the end and then pull out my Dymo label maker. I also have a, what is the other one? A P-Touch I believe. But um, I'm trying to use up this one as well. So any label maker, I think, you know, it's going to label stuff. That's all I need. Nothing fancy. So I'm going to just put Alta New and Flowing Butterflies right there on my stencil. Anyway, just wanted to show you that real quick. That's how I store my stencils. It has changed the game for stenciling for me because now I use them a lot more because I am more organized. And if you're like me, that helps with the creative process. I like to know what I have. I like to have it at, you know, a really quick, easy way to get to it. Okay, so we're back to the card. The card is now dried. I left it uh, pretty much overnight. Um, you don't have to, I just did. 
And I'm gonna pull out some pink glitter cardstock and then some purple shimmer cardstock. I have this paper rose dye here, which is this labeling, not labeling, um, layered, layered dye. And I am going to cut out the thanks and then the background to it. I love the um, shadow look. I think it's great. I think it's just a perfect way to break up the sentiment because I wanted the sentiment pink. So I'm pulling out my Fisker's trimmer here and I'm gonna trim off about an eighth of an inch on each side of this panel. Not too much, but just enough to give me a border uh, that I'm gonna put behind it a gray piece of cardstock. This um, cardstock is just the perfect color. I didn't wanna use white because I think white would have drowned it out a little bit too much. So right here I'm gonna, I don't know what's going on with my lighting. That's crazy, sorry about that. Um, E6000 is no odor liquid spray adhesive. I love this stuff for intricate dyes. It works really well. And now I can say it works really well. I have not tried it on glitter though, to you know, um, spray it on the back of something and then put that something onto glitter cardstock. I have not done that yet. But otherwise, regular cardstock, it's brilliant. And there is no odor and I don't have to smell like that Elmer's spray. Oof, that stuff, you have to do that outside. Here I'm just showing you that it is not warped as much as it could have been. Um, so I was really happy about that. However, I want this to lay down extremely flat. So I'm pulling out my score tape. This is one inch score tape. And that is going to help make that even flatter, especially when I'm doing, um, putting it down on like a thicker cardstock. Okay, so I get that laid down and I'm just gonna press it down. And now here I've popped up my sentiment and we'll put that down right there on the side. So that's pretty much it for the card. I'm not gonna add anything else, although I was tempted because I feel like it'll go through the mail pretty easily like this. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Walk away, Mary. <laughs> that's it. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up this card here by putting it on a card base using a score buddy. Um, I like to score my 110 card stock. I have tried to fold my 110 card stock in the past and it just gets a creasy mess right there where the score line is. So this always helps me. That's why you always see me do it in my videos. Um, but I'm just gonna finish that up using some glue to add this card panel to the card base. My glue of choice for this card is Elmer's Glue All. I find this is probably the only Elmer's product that I will use. I did this in a test review. Um, Cindy, one of uh, my crafty friends, had recommended it, and so I gave it a shot, and I really do like it. It has a lot of wiggle room, and it's a really great price. It doesn't give, it doesn't come out as thin, so for certain projects, I'll use different uh, glue, like the Art Glitter Glue. But anyway, that will do it for that card. Here are some close-ups of the cards we made at the event. You can see that vibrancy and the brightness. This was so much fun to do. This was used with regular white embossing paste. And I believe it was from Ranger. And like I said, the Dr. Martin's liquid watercolor. And then here are some close-ups of the card we made today. Thank you so much for stopping by and for crafting with us. Don't forget to head over to Craft Galley to check out all the great deals in store. I will list what we used below in the description and you know I love talking to you so comment below and we'll chat it up down there. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.